So you want to start your own tabletop gaming channel here on YouTube? Let's go over what you need to know before you even record that first video. Every year, millions of new YouTube channels pop into existence. Their owners add their voices and their expertise to the 500 hours of video that gets uploaded to the platform every minute. And then after a couple of weeks, they abandon their channels. Some of these folks get bored or sidetracked. Others didn't have a clear vision of what they were going to do, and still others had an unrealistic expectation of what they were going to get out of the platform. So I'm going to help you succeed where they failed. Today we're going to go over what you need to know before you start your YouTube channel, things that you need to prepare for, ideas that you have to have in your head, answers that you need to guide your journey. Before you bust out your camera, you need to figure out why you want to be on YouTube to begin with. What is your grand purpose, your motivation? Do you just want to create videos for fun? Do you want to learn about videography and lighting and editing and all of that? Or is this a form of self-expression for you? Or do you want to create a brand and start a business? All of these are very valid reasons and you may have something else entirely. Figure out why you want to do this and keep that central in your mind. Now don't worry that you're going to choose the wrong thing and things aren't going to turn out right. You're not married to this decision. You can change your mind down the line. Anybody who's had a channel for any significant period of time can tell you that. For example, I started my channel as a way of explaining the rules of Dungeons & Dragons so that I could understand them more thoroughly. I quickly pivoted into doing guide videos for published modules. So decide what your motivation is right now, but know that you're not married to it. Next, consider what your channel's central theme is going to be. What are you about, essentially? If you've answered that with tabletop gaming or Dungeons & Dragons, I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little more specific, at least to begin with. The landscape of D&D channels and tabletop gaming channels is vast. There's thousands upon thousands of them, and yours is going to be one more. It's going to have to find its own little niche within that landscape. Maybe you like to do funny skits or give advice on how to run the game better or play the game better. Or maybe you want to comment on the various rules. If you're an animator, maybe you want to make crazy cartoons and, or make people laugh. There's four main genres, as I like to call them, among these kinds of channels. There's the advice channel, the commentary channel, stories, and actual play. Now there's a lot more than that when you break it down, but I think those are the big main ones. Pick something to start with that speaks to you and that lets you create the kind of content that you are passionate about. Lunch Break Heroes, for example, falls squarely in the advice genre. Whatever genre you pick, it should be something that is genuine to you, something that speaks to your passions, to your soul, something that you can ramble on about for hours and hours, something you've got a lot of expertise in. Now that genuine relationship to your topic and your message is going to increase your viewers' trust in you and their interest in your videos. For example, if I was hawking the latest hair care products, you'd rightfully think that I was full of crap. But I'm not doing that. I'm talking about a game that I'm super passionate about. I love helping other people run a better game, and so that's what I do. That genuine relationship to my topic shows through my videos, and it's helped me get where I want to be right now. Just like your motivation, your channel's central theme can change over time. You don't have to be married to one thing forever. If you start out doing advice videos, for example, you can decide whenever to just start doing funny skits. It's entirely up to you and within your control. There are channels out there that never saw success until they pivoted and started doing a whole different thing. So don't worry about choosing the wrong thing now. You can always change your mind later. But just like your motivation, you need to figure out what it is you want to do right now so that you can actually start doing something. On YouTube, everybody starts at zero. Zero views, zero dollars, zero subscribers. Even Critical Role, with their 900,000 subscribers, started at zero. So knowing that everybody starts at the same baseline, your next step is to define what success means to you on the platform. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you're here to build a brand and a business and make some money off the YouTube platform. With that in mind, your goals and your definition of success is going to be monetary. Maybe you want to replace 
your day job with YouTube, or maybe you just want some walking around money. Whatever it is, it's entirely up to you, and it's going to change what your overall goal is. And that's what you're going to do here. Now, your goal, your big grand goal, is going to be your, your definition of success, at least for right now. For example, maybe you want to make $1,000 a month on YouTube, and you want 100,000 subscribers. Whatever your goal is, write it down and put it in front of you. This is your beacon. But a big goal isn't enough. A big goal can be daunting and discouraging, and it can even help you fail if that's all that you have. At this point, it's time to create small milestones. These are little tiny goals that help you on your way to your big one. They give you something to accomplish in the short term to keep you on track, keep you focused, and keep you from being discouraged that you aren't at your big goal yet. Using the example goal of 100,000 subscribers and $1,000 a month, your first milestone could be your first 10 subscribers. I know that's not a lot, but it could take a while to get that when you're starting at zero. Your next goal, your next milestone could be 50 subscribers, and then 200, and then 500, and then 1,000, and then monetization. At that point, you could start throwing in revenue goals, and they just build and build and build and build on each other until you finally reach that big goal that is looming in front of you. Now, with your definition of success and your big goals in mind and maybe a few milestones, you're going to have to do the next thing in this whole process, and that is set some realistic expectations. I'm not going to lie to you. Your initial videos are not going to do very well. At all. And unless you've got some professional filmmaking experience, they're probably not going to be all that good. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be proud of them. You absolutely should. But when you look back on them in six months, you're probably going to cringe internally. At least that's what I do. Just because you upload a video to a platform that has billions of users doesn't mean you're going to get billions of views, or even millions, or even thousands. Yours is a new channel, with basically zero clout. The YouTube algorithm recommends videos from channels that have been more established, that have uploaded on a regular basis over brand new ones. Gaining traction is going to take time. Gaining views is going to take time. Gaining subscribers is going to take time. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. It may not happen the first week, may not happen the first month, okay? I don't mean to discourage you here, but your expectations have to be tempered. They have to be reasonable. As YouTube is very fond of saying, this is a marathon. It is not a sprint. This goes almost double for folks in the D&D or the tabletop space in general. There are just fewer people out there looking for our content, and that's something that we have to live with. There's a lot more people out there looking for Minecraft or photography videos or science videos than there are people looking for Dungeons and Dragons videos. And that's okay. We have our own niche and our own landscape, and that's where we live. But this makes it hard to gain traction, especially at first. In my first month, I received a whopping 50 minutes of view time. This can be very discouraging, but it's just something that you're going to have to power through. It gets better, I promise. Even the type of video that you choose to make plays into how many views you get. Campaign diaries and actual plays don't get a lot of views, but advice videos do pretty okay. If you want to make funny skits and entertain people, or if you're a great animator, you can get a lot of views like that. Whatever you plan to do, plan on slow and steady growth. Like I said before, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You're in it for the long haul if you're going to run a channel that sees any measurable amount of success. So buckle in, it's going to be a wild ride, but it's probably going to be a long one. Next, let's talk about the money that you can make from your channel. This isn't all just fun and games and making videos. There's real money involved here. In fact, it's where all these fancy lights come from. If you want to make money from your YouTube channel, one of your first goals is going to be monetization. This is where you can make money from the ads that play during, after, and before your videos. The requirements for monetization right now, at the time of this recording, are 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time within the last calendar year. Once you meet those requirements, you can get approved, turn it on, and just watch the money start rolling in. I'm, I'm kidding. It's more of a teeny tiny trickle. Pennies a day. But it grows. In all honesty, ad revenue from YouTube is a small piece of the income pie for most YouTubers. Unless you're getting millions of views, it doesn't add up to a whole lot. 
The trick for making money off of YouTube is the same trick that rich people use to get rich, and that is diversify your income streams. Ad revenue from YouTube is just one stream, and it's a tiny trickle, like I said before. Next to that is the ever-popular Patreon, which we use here at Lunch Break Heroes. It's how we afforded all the lights in this room right now. If I didn't have Patreon, I'd still be recording in my office on this little thing right here. But thanks to you patrons, we can afford professional equipment. Now, if you want to become a patron and help support the channel, there's a link in the description down below. For as little as a dollar per video, you can help us step up our own game here at Lunch Break Heroes. If you don't want to do that, go ahead and just click the subscribe button down below, and we'll see you back here for future videos as well. Aside from that, there's affiliate links, where you promote somebody else's product in your video, and you put a link in the description. When somebody clicks on the link and buys the product, you get a percentage of the profits. If you don't want to do that, you could start up your own online store and promote your own products and make money that way. The sky is the limit. Here on YouTube, you can make money off of your videos in any number of ways, as long as it's, you know, legal. Got all of it so far? Great. Now it's time to make your first video, then your next one, and then your next one, and upload them. Every time you make a video, pick something about it that you want to do better. Then, in your next video, improve on that detail. All of these improvements in all of these videos add up to something great over time. But remember, you don't have to have professional lighting or a great camera to get started. All you really need is a room and a phone. That's it. All the rest, well, that comes later.